best way to become a better mechanical design engineer is to study the things around us and figure out how they work. Today we bring to you a contour gauge. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but they're pretty cool. We're gonna do three things in this video. What is a contour gauge? Study the mechanisms inside of it and reverse engineer on CAD. So number one, a contour gauge is composed of various of these very thin pillars that slide up and down vertically with a little bit of friction and they're best used to duplicate the profiles and geometries of irregular surfaces. You slide it up on the surface, you pull this lever on the side, very important, and once you pull that lever, it locks in the, the pillars in a place and now you can do a contour of your geometry so you can do cutouts for tiles and wood. Very handy for home renovation projects. Let's take off some screws. What's happening here is that there's a little bit of space between the sticks and these sticks are constrained by two walls, one on the left and one on the right. Here is the wall, that black face in here that's coming in contact with this, and here's the other wall. What's gonna eliminate that space and cause friction, which is gonna prevent them from moving, is the mechanism that governs this device, which is this cam lever. As you turn the cam lever, as you may notice, the radius between the axis point and the edge of the cam increases. As you can see here, the distance from this face to the axis point, it gradually increases as you turn the lever, which causes this black face to move in the horizontal direction towards the left. So we held this, this uh, stick in place and we moved this face to the left, it's causing compression and that friction is what's preventing the sticks from moving anymore once you engage the lever. And that can be simply explained by physics. The force of friction is the coefficient of friction times the normal force. All we did here is increase the normal force with this lever, and the normal force is the force in a perpendicular direction to a face. One thing to take into account is that these screws hold the steel plate in place. If you remove them, the mechanism doesn't work any longer. For the CAD portion, I'm going to show you three things. Number one, how to reverse engineer the contour gauge in a clean CAD modeling technique. Number two, one tip for reverse engineering. Number three, how I was able to replicate the contour of the door frame geometry with the orange sticks, which is no easy task. My preferred technique in SOLIDWORKS is called a master model, which is a part file, as you can see up here. It's not an assembly file, it's a part file in which I created numerous sketches and extrusions and cuts to create solid bodies. As you can see, I have 11 solid bodies. And then you do a save bodies command to export all those bodies into an assembly. And then in the assembly, you give the bodies motion. So let me walk you through how I did this. Let's roll the feature tree back up to the skeleton group, and as you know from the previous uh, Word document, <clears throat> excuse me, the skeleton group contains all the sketches. So everything is done, essentially, when you finish the skeleton group. Then you just need to start creating the solid bodies. So whenever you wanted to create a solid body, you just click on the sketch you wanted, you convert the entities, and you make the extrusion. You build the walls, you build the lid, one solid body at a time, and it's all referencing that parent sketch. <clears throat> the orange stick, the cam lever. Let me show you an example for the cam lever. So whenever I wanted to build the cam lever, <clears throat> you see no dimensions and that is because I simply clicked on the sketch I wanted, converted the entities and did the extrusion and that's it. Now why would you do this you may ask? Well, the huge benefit is because whenever you have a customer or you test a prototype, you realize that you always need to make iterations. And the worst part about CAD modeling is the feature tree just totally blowing up on you whenever you make a change to something. The huge benefit is that if you want to make changes, all you should be able to, you should have to do is go to the skeleton group and make those dimension changes and everything should update without breaking. So let's give that a shot. Let's go to... Let me see the orange stick, and that is referencing, if we track here, sketch number five. So if we edit sketch five, and the customer said, you know what, that orange stick, it's got to be 100 centimeters, not 54 for half of it. Okay, just arbitrarily picking a dimension here, guys. 
Uh, so you click good and then everything updated without any errors. So that is the beauty. Moving on to the second thing I wanted to show you. If we roll the feature tree all the way up, I'm actually going to do something that most people on YouTube never do, which is show you step by step how to do something. I actually used a, a picture to reverse engineer this fairly quickly, guys. This is uh, not a project from a paid customer. This is for YouTube. So we didn't invest uh, a lot of hours into this, but it's a rough sketch of the reverse engineering. So you take a picture, uh, took another picture here from the side view. Can you guys see the, the contour gauge? That's the side view. This is the top view. This sketch has the cam lever. <clears throat> so here's the tip that I wanted to give you. As you can see, it's undefined with it fairly quickly. But I was able to capture this silhouette and this organic geometry using this tool, which is, this is my second recommendation, the style spline. Extremely useful whenever you want to capture these geometries. Third and final tip is how to get all these sticks, which are over 150 of them, to adopt the contour of the door frame. <clears throat> and just so that you can appreciate uh, what's going on inside here that I didn't show you before, that's the cam lever. So that's some of the reverse engineering. So what we had to do was, I'm gonna hide the floor. We converted the entities of the wall, converted that into a sketch, and then we used that sketch, so here's the answer, to a curve-driven pattern. You get it over here? Curve-driven component pattern. And that's what you need to use, and then you select one edge of the orange sticks. Now to explain that whole feature, it will be another video by itself, but that's essentially what you need to do in order to get the contour of the door frame. Supporting medical device engineering teams who have either insufficient bandwidth or expertise internally, Pipeline develops custom turnkey fixtures and automated equipment to test, inspect, characterize, qualify, and assemble your devices.